The Wasion Congregational United Church of Christ welcomes you now to our audio online worship for July 8th, the 11th Sunday after Pentecost, with Pastor William Kerr, organist Ruth Ann Paxson, and pre-recorded hymns of praise. During this continuing season of COVID spread in our community, we're delighted to share our service online for those who choose to worship at home. We invite you to visit our live worship at the corner of Clinton and West Elm Streets in downtown Wasion each Sunday morning at 11 o'clock a.m. For more information about our lives together, please visit our website at wasionucc.org. And now, enjoy our recorded worship service. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to church this morning, this beautiful Sunday morning. Truly another Sunday morning the Lord has made for us all. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm Pastor Bill Kerr. I do you welcome you to the Washington Congregation of the United Church of Christ. Those who are listening or worshiping with us uh, virtually on uh, www.washingtonucc.org or the Washington Congregation of the United Church of Christ on our Facebook page, uh, we do welcome you. Uh, please contact us if you'd like to at 419-335-5571 at the church here, uh, or you can try us at uh, Washington Congregational at gmail.com. So please let us uh, hear from you and let me have a relationship with you. I have some announcements this morning. First of all, I'd like to thank Ruth Ann Paxson again for her wonderful music every Sunday. Ruth Ann, again, a beautiful prelude this morning. Thank you so much. Uh, Just a few ongoing announcements today. Uh, every Tuesday at 7 o'clock in the evening, we have a Bible study that's uh, still on Zoom. We may be bringing it into the church here, but uh, we'll see what happens here. But uh, call 419-335-5571, our number here, and uh, give us your name and phone number, and we'll see to it uh, that Joni Kerr gets you the numbers to join us for those uh, Bible studies. So please join us. We'll have a lot of fun with that, learn a lot as we study the Bible each week. Uh, Reminder that the farmer's market is uh, from 8.30 to 12 each Saturday morning. Stop down there. Some wonderful things going on down there. And, you know, we're supporting a uh, bicycle club, something new in the community this year. And so uh, stop down. I'd like to talk to you. Bring your bikes down there. We have a, uh, a wonderful man that's working with us, uh, Kevin Cordell, who has uh, Black Swamp Spoke and Pedal uh, between, kind of out there between uh, Dalton and Swanton. And we want to thank him for his participation with us. And so if you need some bikes fixed or uh, looking for a, a good used bike or a good uh, uh, purchase on a bike, uh, let us know. And so we'll be having the next uh, uh, in event we're going to be having is on Sunday, August 22nd. We'll be having a picnic to kind of get things going, have a little bit more form formality to this uh, club. So if you'd like to join us for that, again, please call us at 419-335-5571. Or get a hold of Jim or Joni Kerr or myself, and uh, we'll let you know what's going on. We have not quite decided on exact... Uh, place yet, but uh, might be out at Homecoming Park, we're thinking, but we'll let you know for sure on that, and that'll be a wonderful time to get together and have some uh, social time there for the Bible, uh, or for the uh, bicycle club that we're starting. 
Uh, some other dates coming up uh, on uh, reminder on August 19th, our next board meeting at 6 o'clock p.m. here at the church with board members. Fulton County Fair coming up already, three on um, September 3rd and 9th, coming up fast. And so uh, we'll always look forward to that uh, wonderful event each year. And the church here on, uh, on a couple of things on uh, the next um, sa on Saturday, August 29th, we'll be having our church in the woods. And that will be over at Rotary Park. We have a, a, uh, a, uh, some lunch in there and we have some cook up some hamburgers and hot dogs and so on. Kind of a potluck. It's a wonderful time to be out in God's nature to have church out in the, uh, on the woods or out in the open. Uh, on, uh, coming up on September, uh, excuse me, on, on uh, August, September 19th, excuse me, we're having our 160th anniversary of this uh, congregation. And so it'll be a wonderful event and we'll probably be having a potluck for that also. Again, we're final plans are being put together for that and here at the church. And so we'll give you more information as we get closer to that. So again, September 19th for that. We also have on October 2nd, we have a quartet coming in from, uh, from Nashville, gonna be with us on, at seven o'clock in that evening, October 2nd here at the church. And then we'll give you more information about that as we get a little closer, but that should be a wonderful evening. And uh, I wanna remind people also that after church, uh, coffee hour, please stop and join us for fellowship after church in the social room next to us and enjoy that time together. Reminder, next Sunday we will have our special offering for our continuing uh, uh, work on our uh, building uh, project that we're doing. So if you'd like to have a special gift for that, next Sunday we'll be doing that. The third Sunday of each, each month we take a little extra offering for that. Do we have any joys or concerns to come before the church this morning? Any prayers to be uplifted this time? All right. If not, we'll go ahead and proceed with our service this morning. Let's now join our call to worship there in your bulletin. God says, everyone who thirsts comes to the waters. Come, you that have no money, come by and eat. We have come to feast on the living bread that we might minister to the world's hungers. We have come to drink from the waters of life that we might minister to the world's thirst. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. Let us worship God, the source of every blessing. Amen. Let's now join our invocation prayer. We are joyful in you, O Lord, as we come together to praise your holy name. We have heard your promise that wherever two or three are gathered in your name, there you are in the midst of them. Come to us now, O bread of life, and feed us with your word. Enter our hearts that we may recognize the signs of your presence around and within us. Lead us forth from here, inspired to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, amen. Let's now join in our opening hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, number eight in the red.
This time I call us to a time of confession. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not with us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's join in our prayer of confession here in the bulletin. Gracious God, we open our hearts and confess our sins against you, against our neighbor, against even ourselves, for the wrongs of our minds, our hearts, our hands, our spirits, forgive us. For our silence and lack of compassion, forgive us. For our self-love and our self-hatred, forgive us. For our part, known and unknown, in the suffering of all of your children, forgive us. For our failures in injustice and peace, forgive us. For all the times we do not walk the way of love, forgive us. For all the times we do not walk the way of love, forgive us. In the name of Jesus Christ, who goes before us, so that we can know love. Amen. Let us now join our hearts and minds in silent confession before our God. Now please join with me in the assurance of pardon in the bulletin. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are also forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Some scripture readings for you this morning. We'll begin with the uh, book of Psalms, chapter 130. Are these words from the book of Psalms. Out of the depths I cry to thee, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let thy ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If thou, O Lord, shouldst mark iniquities, Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with thee, and thou mayest be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope, my soul waits for the Lord. More than watchman for the morning, more than watchman for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is plenteous redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. We're going to reading from the book of Psalms. Then we're going to turn again to the book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 25 through 5 dash 2. Hear these words from the book of Ephesians. Therefore, putting away falsehood, let everyone speak the truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger. And give no opportunity to the devil. Let the thief no longer steal, but rather let him labor, doing honest work with his hands, so that he may be able to give to those in need. Let no evil talk come out of your mouths, but only such as is good for edifying as fits the occasion that it may impart grace to those who hear. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God in whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, and walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a fragrant offering 
and sacrifice to God. Turn at the reading from the book of Ephesians. Now we'll turn to our gospel lesson this morning. Reading from the gospel of John. Now it'll be chapter 6, verse 35 and 41 through 51. Hear these books, hear these words from the Gospel of John. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall not hunger, and who believes in me shall never thirst. And then 41 through 34, 51. The Jews then murmured at him because he said, I am the bread of and the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph? whose father was and mother we know? How does he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not murmur among yourselves. No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has, been, has seen the Father except who is from God. He has seen the Father. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread which comes down from heaven that a man may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread which I shall give for the life of the world is my flesh. To run at the reading from the Gospel of John, these words are true and can always indeed be trusted. Amen. Amen. Let's now join our sermon hymn, Break Thou the Bread of Life, number 254 in the red.
Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I want to talk a little bit about a sermon of faith this morning. We, you know, we talk about a lot of things, love and forgiveness, and today we'll think a little bit about faith. The title of this, Come None, Come All. You'll recall in our gospel reading two weeks ago that we saw Jesus perform a miracle and fed the 5,000 from five small loaves of bread. And after that, we saw how the people wanted more bread. And then they wanted a sign from Jesus Christ. All this after he had fed them bread in a deserted place, just as God had fed the children of Israel in the wilderness on their journey to the promised land. And that the sign that he was from God was the miracles he was performing in their presence. And that these miracles pointed them and us to the greater sign of his death and his resurrection. So last week, our reading closed with this brief exchange between Jesus and the crowd. Jesus tells them that the bread of God is not the manna that they were bragging about, but that the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. To this, the people say, Sir, give us this bread always. It looks like they're back on track. And that may be, just may be, that they're getting it. That they are understanding what Jesus is talking about. But alas, such is not the case. Jesus has just said that the bread of God is not a thing, but a person. He who comes down from heaven. Instead of asking who is he, or how can bread be a person, or a person be bread, they simply say, give us this bread. Nor is it clear that they understand that the bread is for, what the bread is for, the life of the world. Perhaps they're all still only thinking about the bread as sustaining this physical, bodily life. Whatever their thoughts were thus far, Jesus responds to their request for this bread, the true bread from heaven, saying, I am the bread of life, the life-giving bread, and I have come down out of heaven. Well, that does it. Now they lost it. What is he saying? I have come down out of heaven? He didn't come from heaven. He comes from Nazareth. He's Joseph's kid. He didn't fall from the sky. He didn't come down from heaven. And they're all grumbling against him. Not unlike the children of Israel who grumbled against Moses and Aaron. Jesus tells them that their fathers ate the manna in the wilderness. Yet, they still died. But the bread come down from heaven that he gives is for the life of the world. Yes, we know this, but what about us? You see, God gave manna to the children of Israel to care for them and give them life. Now, Jesus is saying that this true bread is for the life of the world. And yes, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. But just because God loves the whole world, the world is a lot of people. I mean, God may love the world. Jesus may give this bread for the life of the world. How do I know that he loves me? That this living bread is for me? Just plain old me. Good question. Let's look at what Jesus says about that. All that the Father gives me will come to me. You are a gift. You are a gift given by the Father to Jesus Christ. And because the Father has given you to Jesus, you come to him. Okay, but how do I know that I was the one given? And how do I come to him? Jesus tells us, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him to me. 
And I will raise him up on the last day. Verse 44. This kind of sounds a little exclusionary, doesn't it? Like a blockade that keeps us from God. No one can come. But really? Really? It's a great assurance. If we are dependent on choosing God, on coming to God, then our hope is in ourselves. And in times of doubt, we have only ourselves to turn to, which is no hope at all. But since we come to the Father only by his drawing, then we know that we believe in him because he has chosen us and indeed he has brought us to him. And in times of despair, we do not look at our choosing God, but at God's choosing us in our baptism. We know that we are chosen by God because we believe in Jesus Christ. And this we cannot do unless the Father has drawn us to him. All right, God chose me. How do I know that I will still be his? But I will make it through the journey. How do I know that I will not get lost along the way? What does Jesus say? I have come to do the will of my Father. Okay? What's the will of the Father? Well, Jesus tells us, The will of my Father is that I should not lose any of those he has given unto me. And the will of my Father is that everyone who looks to me and believes in me shall live forever. We know that Jesus came to do his Father's will, and he was obedient to his Father's will. What did Jesus pray in the Garden of Gethsemane? Gethsemane. Not my will, but yours be done, Father. And he did it. How does St. Paul say it? Obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Now, if Jesus was obedient in his crucifixion, And he was, and if Jesus did his Father's will fully and completely in his suffering, dying, and rising, and he did, do you believe, even for one second, that having purchased and won you, bought you, and redeemed you, that Jesus will not also do the will of the Father so that none of us will be lost? So that you will not be lost. You are one of the everyone who looks to Jesus Christ, who believes in him, and has eternal life. Okay, okay, God may have picked me, and he may not have lost me, but how do I know that I stay picked? Who can say that he or she is a first-round draft pick? Maybe God dropped me from the roster. It's hard to do enough to just squeak by. What else does Jesus say? Whoever comes to me, I will in no way cast him out. God will not drop us because of our doubts. He will not drop us because of our sinning. He will not cast us aside because we don't measure up, because we don't just squeak by. In the exodus from Egypt, God rescued Israel. Not all people, certainly not the Egyptians, but Israel. In the wilderness, God gave them manna. But not for everyone, for Israel. Now Jesus is giving life, and he is and has given it also to each and every one of us. Not just Israel nor just to the world as a whole, to a nameless, faceless crowd, which may be me or might not be me, but to us, you and me, each of us. And we know that we are the ones he gives this to, for it is all the work of our gracious, wonderful God. The Father has given us, you and me, 
to Jesus Christ. He has drawn us to Jesus. And because he draws us, we come. We have come. And because we have come, we look to Jesus Christ, the one he has sent. And because we look to him, we believe in him and indeed have eternal life. He is ours, and we are his. He will never, ever lose us. He will never, ever cast us out. On the last day, we shall raise all people, and we and all believers will live with Jesus Christ and our God forever. For Christ has died. Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Amen and amen. Let us pray after the train. Father, hear our prayers this morning, this beautiful summer morning. We come to you with many things on our minds and our hearts today. So hear these prayers this morning as we lift them to you. Father, again, we begin always with praising you and thanking you for blessings bestowed upon us in our lives. So many, we cannot count them, but we give you so much thanks. For we know they all come from you. And we know that there will be so many, many more to come. We do thank you. We thank you for this beautiful, beautiful Sunday morning. We thank you for our wonderful church, for the fellowship that we have here, the love we feel here, the forgiveness, the wonderful times, the, the history we have here with each of us. We thank you. We thank you for all your churches, all your, your children scattered around the world. We give thanks. We give thanks for the opportunity to hear your voice each day that you can take us through times that we need you most. We thank you to hear your, your voice for strength, for peace, for forgiveness, indeed for hope for the future. Father, there are so many difficult times in our country and our world right now continuing. Father, this terrible COVID is again raising its ugly head. Help us, Lord, to understand this disease. Help our doctors to be wise and nurses and help us to stay together strong and do the right things to protect each other, that we might come through this valley in these difficult times of COVID. So many people have come to you. We know they're with you. And that gives us peace to know that. But it hurts, Lord. It hurts to see people suffering, suffering on this earth and dying and leaving us, this terrible disease. So keep us, keep us strong as we go forward. Lord, there are physical things, there are tornadoes and earthquakes and floods. There is crime, there are shootings in this, in this world. There are difficult moments that we all must face. So again, Lord, we ask you to come into our hearts and our minds and give us peace. As peace as our lives change, as, as we go forth in strength, help us to know that you're with us, guiding us, walking right beside us to whatever comes with us, comes to us. At this time, Lord, let us take a moment to hear our private prayers to you and lift them up to you. Let us pray now in silence for a few moments. Well, Lord, again, we give you thanks for wonderful weather, for the rainfall, for sunshine, for heat, bringing the crops forward. They are so beautiful this year. We do give you thanks for all that. Again, we thank you for our church. Guide us, Lord, as we go forward. Help us to take your message to the community, to people who need it most. There's so much needed out there. Help us to learn, to be strong, and take this wonderful story and message that you would have us give to the world. Father, again, we, we thank you for hearing our prayers this morning. 
Be with us this coming week. Walk with us. Hear our prayers each day as we pray to you. Now join us here our prayers as we pray the prayer that your son taught us together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now again, my friends, freely we have received so much, freely give. Let your light so shine among men that the good Lord may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We will now receive our morning offerings. You may place your offerings in the, in the plates in the back as you leave. Let us now receive our morning offerings. Accept these offerings now placed on your altar, O God, the giver of every good and perfect gift. Grant that they may be symbols of our love and of ourselves now offered more fully to you. Use these gifts and us, we pray, to the end that your realm may come and your will be done on earth, even as it is done in heaven. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let's now join our closing hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be, number 466 in the green hymnal.
My friends, as each day unfolds to us, in front of us, increase your faith. Believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, for he is our way to our God. Believe he is always there for us in everything we do each day. For Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Now, my friends, again, we have worshipped God here in our beautiful sanctuary this morning. May the spirit which you have felt here in our service be your spirit each and every day this coming week, and indeed, throughout your life. Amen and amen. You've been listening to a Sunday morning worship service from the Wasion Congregational United Church of Christ. We appreciate your sharing and worship with us. If you'd like to support our building restoration project, please consider a donation by mail to the Wasion Congregational United Church of Christ, P.O. Box 172, Wasion, Ohio 43567, or online at wasionucc.org. We thank you for your support. Please join us next week at 11 o'clock a.m. for worship. May God bless you.